Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. This is the point in the series where I'm going to start demoing some of the features being introduced in .NET 6. Today's topic is Error Boundaries, a feature made popular by React. Simply put, you can encapsulate any component tree with an error boundary component. Any time an unhandled exception occurs inside that component tree, the error boundary can display custom UI. In the case of Blazor Server, an unhandled exception will bring the app to a screeching halt. So I'm going to go beyond the simple demos you might have seen where we wrap the entire application in an error boundary. While that demo is helpful to understand how it works, it isn't very practical. I'll show you a more realistic scenario where you use an error boundary around a specific component for a specific task. And that's coming up right now, right here on Blazor Train. So I've installed Visual Studio 2022 Preview with .NET 6 RC2, Release Candidate 2, in a brand new Azure virtual machine. The reason I did that is because not only were there breaking changes from some of the earlier previews, but they're breaking changes from RC1. So uh, rather than mess around with it, and believe me, I did mess around with it and tried to get it to work, I just decided to make it easy on myself and install Visual Studio 2022 Preview in its own virtual machine. So if you want to do that, just search for Install Visual Studio 2022, and that brings you to this page right here. When you download this, you can pick Professional, Enterprise, or Community. Community works just fine. And if you want to see the uh, exact process of going through creating a new Azure VM and all of that, go to the following URL. On last week's episode of the .NET Show, I showed people how to install RC1, Visual Studio 2022, which is the same instructions, in a brand new virtual machine and actually use your local Android phone passing through via a USB to RDP tool. So that's right, you can create a MAUI application in a virtual machine and connect your local phone and actually see it on your local Android device. It's pretty cool. But anyway, go there if you want to see from scratch how to create this virtual machine. All right, so I've got now in this pristine virtual machine a new Blazor server application called Error Boundaries. There it is right there. And what we're going to do first before we do anything is cause an exception. And in my counter page, right after we increment the current count, we're going to throw a new exception with the message count must not exceed four. See, we have to sort of construct an exception that happens under some condition. But in the real world, you don't know what it is. That's why you're not handling it. So there you go. Now, of course, if I run this by itself, I go to the counter page and I go one, two, three, four, and you can see it's four right there, right? Now I'll click again. This is gonna break right here. This is the first problem. But if I continue, now I'm getting this dreaded UI right there, an unhandled exception has occurred. And by the way, since this is Blazor server, it completely stops working. And actually that's a good thing because after an unhandled exception happens, the state of your application is actually kind of dangerous and can be used as a threat vector. So you don't want to mess anything up, uh, you know, your, your data, your database, uh, other things that get persisted and saved. We want to stop right here. But you don't always want to stop, right? Sometimes it's just a single component that has uh, an issue. And, you know, if you have to restart the page because it's some bad data or something, no harm, no foul. Well, anyway, the first thing we're going to do here to make it easier to work with this is I'm going to change my mode from debug to release. All right, that way it's not going to break when I get this error. Uh, it's just going to blow up. See, didn't break, but uh, it definitely threw that exception. 
Okay, now comes the fun part. First of all, I'm going to show you the demo uh, that you can find in Preview 4, the blog post for .NET 6 Preview 4. Uh, and that is to wrap the entire body in main layout razor in this error boundary. So essentially, step one, wrap the entire, uh, you know, everything in the application, the body, in an error boundary. And let's see what happens now. Okay, an error has occurred. This is the default style, but notice that my reload option has gone away. However, the app is still broken, right? So again, this is sort of the demo that uh, came in the documentation. It's not prescriptive, all right? We're not asking you to put an error boundary around everything, but this is uh, a good demonstration of how error boundary works but I'll get into more of the practical aspects of it in a minute. So the next step is to recover. Let's take a look at this. This is still the main layout. And now I've got, uh, if you go down to the code here, I've got this error boundary reference. And on parameters set, I'm going to reset any error state. Basically this says if error boundary is not null, then call recover on it. And that does exactly what you think it's gonna do. It recovers from the error. But look at this right here. Here in the error boundary, I've added the reference to error boundary right here. So now this guy represents this error boundary. Now I have a child content because you know every component that uh, you can wrap around something has a child content and we're putting the body in there. And now we have this error content, which could be your custom UI, right? So remember, this is happening completely around everything. And while this isn't a good idea, it does really demonstrate the error boundary working anywhere. And it's not a good idea because you don't really have fine-grained control over what to show here. You're just saying, an unhandled error occurred, and you're recovering. So let's see what that looks like. There you go. Now because we recovered, everything still works. It's just that that page has been replaced with a message. So the page no longer works, right? Everything else went away here, but the app doesn't break. So that's kind of cool. Let's take this demo one step further to illustrate the context. The error content has this context parameter, and I'm naming it ex. Now I can have code that uses ex, and I've got this little handle error uh, thing, which I'll show you in a minute. But now you can show uh, and examine the exception itself, the message, the stack trace. Again, this is not prescriptive. I'm just showing you how this works. We'll talk about how to use this in the real world in a minute. So here's my handle error. And the reason that I do this, I call in and I just return true, is just so that I can get some real code that works with this, right? Now, I'm not saying this is where you should handle all unhandled exceptions and log them, okay? You wanna use the iLogger interface to do logging and that handles unhandled exceptions and will log them wherever you want. I mean, that's, that's the real way to handle, to log unhandled exceptions. You wouldn't do it here. But just for, you know, for the demo's sake, we can pass that exception into handle error examine it, and then even show pieces of it right here. Okay, here we go. What you're seeing here is the message from the exception, count must not exceed four, and the stack trace. And what's more impressive, let me stop this and go back to debug mode. 
is if in debug mode, I could put a breakpoint right here in handle error, and it will show you that this is actually getting called. Now first we have the exception. Now we have handle error. So there's your exception object with which you can do whatever you want. All right, again, I really have to reiterate that this is not prescriptive. This is not how you would use error boundary in most situations. For that, let's make a component and we'll use the error boundary around that component's output. So down in the shared folder, I'm going to add a new razor component called number component. Now this component isn't going to have any error boundary stuff in it. We're going to do that outside of the component. But take a look at this. All right, so the only UI I have is what you would see in the counter page. It's the same exact UI, except we're using this number parameter. And on parameters set, if the number is greater than four, we're going to throw an exception. And we're actually going to show the number. So this architecture is real world, even though the demo is really simple. You get the idea. You've got a component, and it's showing something. And that component may encounter an unhandled exception. So now let's wire up the counter. We took out the code that throws the exception in here, but we did add this error boundary, and we're recovering any errors before we increment the count. And then up here, where we would normally show that, you know, the current count, we're going to use the number component. That's in the child content. And we're setting the number equal to current count. In the error content, we're going to show the message from the component. And let's set it back to release mode so it doesn't break. Okay, number five is greater than four, but notice that the whole page doesn't get replaced because we're not putting the error boundary around the entire content, just the output of this particular component. And that's really good. And of course, it's still working because we recovered. So I can continue to increment. Now the number increments, you see that, but we're still handling this exception and we're telling the user something about, you know, what happened here. In this case, we're just showing the message from the exception. Rest of the app works, but now we've got something that's a little more dialed in uh, in terms of what we're showing and what error we're handling. And if you take a look at it, it's not that much different from the original counter. The only difference is we're wrapping the output. Well, first of all, we're using a component and we're wrapping the output in, an, in the child content. So that is my demo, Error Boundary. It's really cool, it's really interesting. Um, it is not meant to be a, a replacement for global error handling for unhandled exceptions. It's not meant to do logging, all right? You have an iLogger for that. But what it is for is showing alternate user interface when a component that you're accessing has an unhandled exception. Now back to you in the studio, Carl. Pretty cool, right? Hey, if you're as interested in writing mobile apps with Maui using Blazor as I am, you want to keep your eyes on our sister show, The Dot Net Show, at the.netshow.com. I've already started building Maui apps with Blazor over there. Keep in the loop by subscribing to my Twitter account, at Carl Franklin. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Blaze a train!